Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do an example of how to use this technique when you're trying to solve a second order circuit. Remember, there are three circuits you want to draw relative to the original problem. You want to draw the circuit when time just before the event happens. In this case, the event is where this particular switch closes. Then you want to draw a new circuit just after the event has happened and then you want to draw a circuit when time has elapsed for a long time as time approaches infinity so to speak when you're past the transient stage and now you're in a steady state uh, situation so what you want to do is you want to in each case calculate the current and the voltage the current in the circuit and the voltage where desired where typically it's what we call the output voltage so in this case the output voltage is across this capacitor notice we have a resistor here a resistor there an inductor and a 24 volt source that sends current through the circuit. Notice that here the switch is open before time equals zero. That means there's no current flowing to this particular branch. So the current flows around the circuit like this. Notice that when you are approaching the event right before the switch is closed, we can say that there's been a steady state condition and at that point the inductor will act like, act like a short and a, and a capacitor will act like an open. So the first thing you want to do is represent the circuit right before the event happens, in this case, right before the switch closes. So you can see that there's no path to this branch right here, so we can just ignore it. Notice that the inductor is now being replaced by a short, and the capacitor is now being replaced by an open. So what does the circuit look like right before we close the switch? It looks like there is a voltage supply, 24 volts, and two resistors in series. So we can calculate the current being V over R, which is two amps, and the voltage across the capacitor will be the same as the voltage across this resistor right here. If we call this resistor R1, and we call this resistor R2, then you can see it's simply a ratio of the voltage across this resistor divided by the voltage across both resistors. So we can see that's equal to 24 volts times the ratio of R1 divided by the total resistance, or 2 divided by 12. That's 1 6 of 24 volts, which is 4 volts. Now the next... <laughs> That's our cat acting kind of weird. Anyway, going on. The next drawing that we draw is right after the event happens, meaning right after the switch closes, which means at that point we know that the current right before must equal to the current right after, the voltage right before must equal to the voltage right after. But what does the circuit look like now? Wow. What? Nobody's torturing the cat. The cat is just like that. It's kind of strange. It's a very old cat. She's been doing that for a very long time. Anyway, so she's just fine. Nothing to worry about. Back to the circuit. So now when we close the switch, Instead of any current going to the 10 ohm resistor, the current now goes through the extra circuit where there's no resistance, so that all the current will go through there. This will now act like an open. We now do have our capacitor, we now do have our inductor, but we realize that the current through the circuit must look exactly the same right after, so it must still be 2 amps like we calculated before, and the voltage must still be 4 volts like we calculated before. And that will, of course, be the voltage across the across the uh, capacitor. And then finally we allow enough time to go by. We say time approaches infinity, of course we don't wait infinite amount of time, we, need, we wait just enough time so the transient period is over. Now again any inductor now changes to a, a closed or a, a short circuit I should say and any capacitor now changes to an open circuit. So that means the capacitor is not an open circuit, the inductor is now just a, a short circuit and now we have a circuit with just one volt, one voltage supply, one source, and one resistor. So now the current, after a long time has gone by, is V over R, 24 volts divided by 2 ohms, which is 12 amps. And the voltage across the capacitor, of course that's this right here, the output voltage across the capacitor. The capacitor is still there, it just acts like an open circuit. You can see that's the same as the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor. Since that's the only resistance in the circuit, the entire voltage drops across that branch and it's therefore 24 volts. And so that's how we solve circuits like that, second order circuits, go through the process of drawing the circuit right before the event happens, the circuit right after the event happens, and then the circuit after a long time has gone by. And of course, these are easier circuits. We'll show you some more complicated circuits, but the technique is the same. 
Always make sure you keep these equations handy because they're going to be needed as we show you some more, adva uh, some more advanced type of problems in the near future. And that's how it's done.